What's up guys, in one of my last videos, I talked about why I purchased the Canon 6D Mark II, and today we're gonna take a deep dive into this camera and review all of those features that made me wanna get this camera in the first place. Thanks for tuning in guys. I've had about a little over a month with this camera since that last video I did. And I've spent a lot of time just like going through this camera, trying new things, getting my settings dialed in as far as like what I like and what's best functionality for me. With all that said, this is really gonna focus on my needs, things I look for in a camera, why I kind of wanted this camera in the first place. I'm not gonna review every single thing, but hopefully I cover quite a bit that kind of gives you a good idea of what this camera is capable of. All right, well now let's Let's jump into this review. Let's first talk about the price point. Looking at your 6D. Oh. So if you're looking at the 6D, 5D Mark IV and the 1DX. That's like the high end Canon DSLR video range. 1DX at the top, best possible video photography camera you can have without it being like one or the other. You've got the 5D Mark IV, which is like right under the 1D, and then you have the 6D Mark II, which, you know, it doesn't quite have the great specs that this has, but it is remarkably cheaper. So if we were to look, the Canon 1DX, right about 5,700. Talking almost $6,000, and then if you're getting a lens, over six grand for sure. That's a lot of money. 5D, and that body's gonna come in right around 3,300. Now let's look at the 6D Mark II. For just the body, you're looking at $18.99, which is right under two grand. And you know what? It's a really good camera. I would put the 6D Mark II right under these cameras. And I think for that big of a price jump for what it has, for what it offers, and almost being on par with these two cameras, I think it's worthwhile. If you're vlogging and you're looking at this as a vlogging camera, 6D Mark II, I think is probably the top of like professional vlogging. Price point like 60 definitely wins. And that's not just because it's cheaper than these other two cameras. I think it's because you're getting a whole lot of bang for your buck with this camera. This is my price point. I like it. I'm comfortable with it. And I know what I'm gonna get out of it. I'm gonna get something really, really awesome. So like I said, I'm gonna break down my needs when it comes to reviewing this camera. And my needs, I am a vlogger, videographer. Uh, I'm like photographer slash Instagrammer. To me, these are my biggest needs when it comes to this camera, what it can offer me to make me as good of a vlogger, videographer, and photographer as I can be. Okay, so as a vlogger, well, I've gotta make a lot of videos on my own, and that's very difficult. So you need a tool that kinda of gives you the most bang for your book. You can do everything on it for the most part. I like to try to do everything on one camera if I can. So to properly review, this part of it, the vlogging. I actually have been vlogging with this camera. And then I took this camera to Donner Summit in Truckee, did some vlogging, and just I mean, really just a test vlog. I haven't put this vlog out. Here's a little taste. What's up guys? Taking a little day trip, have a little photographic adventure, do some pretty in-depth testing of this camera, play with some 60 frames per second, put this camera through its bases. So here's a little taste of vlogging on the 6D Mark II. Come along! Okay, so we want this camera to be lightweight. You're vlogging, so if you've got like a Gorilla Pod, which I've got one, I've got the Javi Gorilla Pod 5K. Look at that, that is going to hold a camera and it's gonna like hold that camera till the end of the world happens. You know, so either I've got it on now or I'm doing this. This is going to get tiring after a while. It is pretty lightweight, it's not awful. A cropped frame or a mirrorless is gonna be 10 times lighter and just nicer for your arms. It's worth it, the trade-off there. Kinda. Flip out screen. Sorry, I have awful handwriting. I get told that 
all the time. Hopefully you can read it, but if not, well, sorry. Man, that makes vlogging so much easier. I'm digging vlogging with this. And it's nice to be able to see yourself while you're doing it see myself and your audio and see you and my audio like th this is a real treat i can properly frame you mm -hmm. in my shot and then you're not like why can't i be seen i've vlogged without a flip out and it's it's doable but it's definitely not easy so flip out yes audio and put Ooh. Those who haven't watched. As a vlogger, I want to try to have everything kind of in camera as possible with one device. You can't be doing dual devices and have a recorder and vlogging like that is such a pain. I need audio. I need good audio to go straight into this. Yes, we get good audio. Icicles, gigantic freaking icicles. Um, Laura apparently has a fear of icicles. On that topic of monitoring your audio, this is a big one. And I'm gonna talk about it on two fronts. I'm gonna talk about it as a vlogger, but I'm also gonna talk about it as a videographer. I, as a vlogger, yes, I can visually see my little audio level on the flip out screen. I know if I'm peaking, I know if I'm too low. That is a great thing about that flip out screen. Yes, I can monitor audio visually, which is great for vlogging. What I will point out, there is no headphone jack on this camera. If I were to name some of the biggest flaws of this camera, I would say not having a headphone jack is a big one. I've always been taught you should always monitor your audio. So if I'm not using this for vlogging, I'm using this for videography, I have no way of monitoring my audio except for that little visual bar, which if there's something wrong with the mic, I might not know. We're just talking about vlogging right now, and as far as that goes, I'm gonna say yes, it monitors my audio, I can do that. Finally, the reason I was so excited to go to this camera after having the 5D Mark II, and I mean, I use the 5D Mark III a lot, and neither of those cameras have the dual pixel autofocus like this camera does. It is hard to know when your stuff's in focus and, and you're filming everything by yourself. So having that autofocus, I went to film school and I was told never to use autofocus, but I use it all the time when I vlog. I absolutely rely on it. And it helps having that like pop out LCD screen, but the two work well together. And yes, it has that. And that's right there. That's my perfect vlogging camera. I'm gonna give it five and a half out of six. Let's move on to videographer. Videography is a little separate from vlogging. I'm talking more about on the freelance side of it, doing videos for other people, for clients, commercials, wedding videos, that kind of thing. Whereas vlogging is like my own short films that, that star and feature me. Some things can kind of mix into the videographer slot and you will see like, okay, there's some duplication of things, but it's how I use it in different ways. Let's jump into it. I went out and shot some videos as if they were for a client. A friend of mine, Lindsay, who makes jewelry, she let me come film her, do her craft, kind of make her a little video. Okay, so one of the big points for this camera that I want to make in terms of being compared to other cameras definitely been mostly compared to the ADD because the ADD is a really great vlogging camera. But my biggest thing that I said I will never get the ADD doesn't have that full frame sensor. In terms of like my main vlogging camera, my primary camera, um, I want it to have a full frame sensor. It's just a better image, better low light, and you want that full lens you want that full width the 6d does have that in a lot of ways it's like the big brother to the add it kind of takes it into the level with the 1d and 5d color excellence canon has great color science the skin tones look good here with videography when i'm making videos for clients Yes, I want good color. It's Canon, of course. So yes, it's got that Canon color science that I like so much. Slow-mo, which it's nice to have. I like to use it. I use it a lot, especially lately. Now with the 60, can shoot 60 frames per second at full. 1920, which is awesome. Steps up my videography game, my vlogging game. The Canon 1DX, the 5D Mark IV at 720, 
does offer 120 frames per second, which this camera does not. Not even at 720, which isn't a huge loss because I probably wouldn't use it anyway. 60p is, is pretty good and I'll take it. Do I wish I had 120? Absolutely. But again, for that price point, as long as I get 60p, I'm happy. Okay, I don't know, I just really like this and call me crazy, but I love that it takes SD cards. The the CF, the compact flash card, they stick into pins, it's got a little hole to the bottom of the card and it sticks into the pins in your camera. And then when the little pins in your camera or your card reader like bend, ugh, get a new camera, get a new card reader, might as well. What I appreciate about this camera is it takes SD cards. They're somewhat affordable I and mean, they're kind of expensive if you get higher in quality and memory. To me, better than CF cards. I hate CF cards, they're the worst. Finally, back to that autofocus. Yes, I've named it twice because it's that awesome to have, especially for videography. It's nice to be able to have that autofocus, whether it's on face detection, tracking mode, or I can just tap on the screen, which I love. I dig that, I really like that. Then it goes into tracking mode and then it's like, all right, I've, I've got my subject in focus. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to try to rack the focus, which I've gotten good at it over the years, but oh, autofocus for the win. We're doing pretty good here. But that's most of what I do with this camera and we're kicking butt with it, so. As far as my photography needs go, they're pretty basic. I'm an Instagrammer, so I want that wireless app. You can hook them up via wireless or Bluetooth and get into your camera. You can use a remote control, which is awesome if you're taking your own self portraits. I found out I'm on the job and they want me to do some Instagram photos. Like I need at least one out right away. So I can just take that photo, go into it with my wireless app and find that photo, pull it into my iPhone, take it into Lightroom Mobile and then send it to Instagram. Love having that wireless app. Does it shoot raw? Yes because almost everything shoots raw nowadays. In terms of like features, that's kind of it. I, that's what I use it for and that's what I'm happy with. Now, like I'm doing food. Let's look at some tasty pics with this thing. Pretty happy with how a lot of those have turned out. I like to do landscapes. I do a little portrait. One of my biggest passions right now is product photography. With that 100 millimeter lens, it's awesome. Here are some photos I've done. Like photography, like, I, yeah, I can do all those things with it. That's what I'm doing with it. So I'm pretty happy with all that. Three out of three. I mean, this camera is a good camera. It's a good image. Functionality, it's all there. Everything I need to do with it and the things I'm willing to sacrifice for that price point, it's worth it. I think it's a good camera, good price point. Little things if I had to criticize. Yes, I'd like 4K. 120 frames per second, come on. A headphone jack. I think of, of all of my problems with this camera, the headphone jack is the one that bugs me the most. Otherwise, I, th I think this camera's golden. Super stoked with it. Love using it so far. Excited to continue using it. You know, if there's anything else you'd like to know about this camera, let me know down in the comments below. Below. Until next time, my friends, I'm Eli Wilbur. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, please. I'd really appreciate it. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.